you're in the business of building the infrastructure that supports and underpins this big push to work from home. Can you give us a better understanding on how you've positioned yourself over the last few months and what business has looked like? Yeah, Jonathan, first of all, thanks for having me. And, and obviously, uh, I want to just thank all of those frontline workers out there who are putting it on the line every day to, uh, to help take care of all of us during this crisis. Um, and, you know, over the last few months, what we have, what we've been focused on as we've entered into this pandemic, we, we very uh, quickly said we're going to focus on our employees, our customers, and our communities. And so uh, we went through all the the work to get our employees working from home, which frankly was pretty seamless for us, given that we we build the technology that makes that happen. Uh, and then we uh, we've spent a great deal of time with our customers, and and I've just been amazed at what the IT organizations inside of our customers were were able to pull off. And I think it's a it's a testament to the the resilience and the scalability of the technology that we've been building for all these years. But uh, I think we went through the phase where our customers have now. Uh, successfully gotten their employees working from home for the most part. Uh, now I believe they are looking ahead and trying to think through what are the key projects and how do they position themselves during this pandemic. Uh, many who are obviously looking to preserve CapEx, others who are looking to shore up their infrastructure, uh, and many who need to uh, actually execute flawlessly during this time because they're part of the, uh, they're a critical part of the response. So we're working on all fronts right now, Jonathan. I'm really proud of what our teams have accomplished. Chuck, how willing are those customers to invest at this point? Jonathan, I think it varies by industry. I think mean, clearly there are there are some industries that are at the very center of this challenge and they are struggling with their revenues candidly going almost to zero in the in the course of forty five to sixty days, which you just never plan for, as we know. Uh, but there are others who You've got Biopharma who's working on treatments, therapeutics, vaccines that need infrastructure. You've got testing uh, companies uh, where you know they're investing in supporting broad-based testing. Uh, you've got other companies that who aren't uh, affected as directly as some of the uh, the hospitality and airlines, etc., who are looking at how do I shore up and modernize my infrastructure right now and get rid of some of the technical debt that I've built up over the years in order to be prepared for perhaps a reemergence in the fall or candidly, what's the next crisis that we're gonna face as a society and we wanna be better prepared next time. Uh, there was a lot of heroic effort by the IT organizations, but I think we all know we could, we could probably uh, modernize our infrastructure to be better prepared. Yeah, I just think from the outside looking in to your company at the moment, you look at Cisco Systems, Chuck, from an investor's standpoint, and you can see why it'd be well positioned to help this huge push to work from home, to leverage some of the stories we've talked about over the last couple of months. But I think where there's some confusion is where, where are the secular tailwinds and where are the cyclical headwinds? Can you help me understand that? Is there a secular tailwind right now for, say, software? Is there a cyclical headwind for hardware? How do I understand what's going on within the business, Chuck? Yeah, Jonathan, I think there's a secular tailwind to obviously security, our security portfolio, and that's comprised of a significant amount of software. Uh, I think that uh, obviously our collaboration capabilities with, uh, you know, the WebEx platform uh, exceeding well over 500 million uh, meeting attendees last month, 25 billion minutes, so that's clearly a tailwind. I think software in general uh, is a, a tailwind. In 2017 at our analyst conference, we we stated an objective to have our software be 30% of our revenue by the end of fiscal 2020, which is the end of July, and have software and services be greater than 50%, and we're on track to meet those objectives. So those are all positive. I think that the transition to the cloud uh, is going to continue to provide an opportunity for us to help our customers re-architect their infrastructure to accommodate the new traffic flows. You've got 5G, you've got 400 gig, you've got Wi-Fi 6. So there are a lot of... Uh, uh, a lot of positives, and I think that this pandemic has reminded all of us of the importance of our technology infrastructure, and frankly, everything that we've built and what we do every day and what our customers like the carriers and the telecom providers around the world do goes largely unnoticed uh, because it just works, and I think that uh, it's a great testimony to what the teams have done.
Chuck, I want to talk about the team that you manage. You've done a lot to promise your workforce that they won't lose their jobs. You've done all the right things. You're also sitting on a lot of cash. Can you talk to me about whether there is a social stigma attached to deploying that cash in an environment like this, to execute more buybacks, to go out there and do M&A? Just as a CEO, do you feel that social stigma at a time like this? Well, I think, listen, I, I, I listen to Washington and watch the news, so I, there's clearly a, a, a backlash on buybacks right now. Uh, and, uh, but I do believe that um, there's certainly uh, credible uses of capital that, uh, that can make sense right now. I think that uh, M&A activity is quite fine as long as it's not predatory. Uh, however, if there are companies that are struggling through this, they might actually welcome the ability uh, for someone to come in and acquire them. Uh, and obviously, I think for companies like us who have strong balance sheet and strong P&L, continue to pay our dividend is important to our investors. Uh, and uh, so we'll, we'll look at all those things in a very balanced way uh, as we go forward. But we don't, we don't view this as creating uh, any sort of strategic shift other than we want to be thoughtful about preserving uh, our capital uh, over the next few years just until we see how this thing's going to play out.